Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Check out this newly released budget friendly 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller for 12 and 24 volt batteries from Time USB. This just hit the market a few weeks ago. So I'm gonna put those paces today and see if it's as good as their other products. So we're gonna find out. Let's get right into it. So what do you get when you purchase one of these time usb 30 amp solar charge controllers well of course you get the controller itself a user manual to give you a wiring accessory kit that's got all kinds of terminals heat shrinks you can make up your wire terminations to hook up to the controller itself you get a battery temperature sensor for temperature compensated charging for lead acid this is not used on the lithium setting for this controller just for lead acid and they give you some wall anchors so you can mount it to a wall if we take a look at the controller, you can see the front of the controller is plastic. We have a display screen right here, user interface buttons. Here's our PV input terminals, our battery output terminals, and our load output terminals. See on the bottom right here, there's where our wires go in right there. There's our for attempt sensor. And we have an RS-45 port, but there's no information in the manual of what this port is used for. There's no indication of communication protocols or anything like that. And on the side, you see the heat sink right here. It's a nice aluminum heat sink with all kinds of cooling fans, so pretty decent heat sink for a 30 amp controller. We have a grounding lug right here, so you see when you mount it properly like this, that's how you mount it. The heat can naturally rise and cool the controller off. And Time USB is rating this controller at 390 watts of PV for 12 volt and 780 watts for 24 volt, but a 50 volt maximum input voltage. So now I'll connect some wires to this. I'll put a battery on it and a PV input and we'll check it out. So I've attached a energy meter on the PV side coming in and on the battery side going out so we can track power moving through this controller. Uh, of course, if you was using this permanently, besides a test, you would have circuit protection, you know, on the PV side, your load side, your battery side. I'm just doing a bench test. I'm not using circuit protection, so keep that in mind. If you're installing it permanently, please use proper overcurrent protection devices. So I'm going to be charging a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So connect to the battery right there. That powers up our controller. Of course, you always connect to your battery first. Don't hook your PV up first on solar charge controllers. You always give it its reference point first. This controller is pre-programmed. When you power it up, it's ready to go for lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'll show you the other settings in just a minute. Just showing you the screens right here. So estimating the state of charge at 73%. You know, that's it's going off a of voltage. It has no idea. It's just looking at a voltage. So there's that. We've got a temperature right there. That's an internal temperature inside the controller itself. And there's your lithium setting right there. That's your lithium iron phosphate setting. L11 is for lithium iron phosphate. That's how it starts up and pre-programmed that way. If you want to change your battery type, you can see right here, of course, this is lithium iron phosphate, which is what we're going to be using. But you say I'll let the screen refresh right there. If you want to go through and change your settings, any settings that are changeable have this little gear icon right here on the side. So roll around through all the little menus. Keep going, keep going, keep going right there. And then you push this one right here and hold it. Then you have a little flashing gear icon right there. Then you can go through and pick whatever type of battery you want. We're gonna go back to lithium iron phosphate and then we'll hold until the gear icon stops flashing. That means that setting is saved, which is lithium iron phosphate. And one thing I realized I did not show you just a second ago is I didn't show you all the different settings and what they mean. So L11 is lithium iron phosphate 12 volt. That's the default setting. L12 is 24 volt lithium iron phosphate. L19 is a liquid battery or flooded lead acid battery. Gel, of course, that's a gel battery. And then a GM. And then that's for other lithium batteries, but there are no specs given for what the charge voltage is for other lithium batteries or any other batteries in general. So I'm gonna knock them on that right off the bat. And then for the load terminals, I'm not gonna be using the load terminals, but I was gonna show you the settings on this anyway. You see I'm in the load settings. I've got the menu flashing right here, the little gear icon flashing. So you can put your 24 hour mode, which is right here. That means the load terminal is on all the time. It never shuts off. You select option one, which is night light mode or street light mode. It turns the load terminal on when there's no PV input. 
And then setting number two is the output time. So you can run this up however many hours you want it to go. So up to nine hours if you're using the program time setting. And use is manual mode, which is the way I'm going to put it. So the load output can be controlled just pressing this key right here. So I'm going to save it under use mode right there so I can turn that load terminal off. Okay, so now you can see the load is flashing on use. That's locked. Stop it. There we go. And it stopped it. So that's how the load terminals work. All right, so I've got this set up. Got two little energy meters right here. Got this one. It's going to track power out of the controller into the battery. You see right there, 13.31 volts. And then I've got this one right here. It's going to track PV. We've got a temporary array set up with a XT60 coming in through the wall for this test to see what this controller can do and track. Uh, it's over 400 watts, this array. So it probably is going to exceed this controller's rating but I want to see the full 30 amps, so I'm going to hook it up now. All right, I just connected the XT60 to this energy meter, so give it a second to track. going to go through and then over to the battery, so let it track right here first. Let it pick it up. All right, we can see some energy coming through now. Let everything stabilize, and we'll get some readings. All right, everything has pretty much stabilized right now. I've got clear skies for a few minutes. I don't know how long this is going to last. I got broken clouds. So while I've got a good reading, we're going to take all the readings we can get. So we have 438, 440 watts coming into the controller and 415, 418 going out. And I'm going to throw a DC clamp over here too for a third reading to see what our actual current is going into the battery. So we're showing 29.63 right there, 30.4. So it's bouncing around where it's tracking. So right at 30 amps. And we got 18 to 19 amps coming in off those parallel set of panels there. On the controller itself, uh, we're showing 13.6. That's it pushing into the battery. So you can see pushing 13.7 over here. There's our temperature. It's not climbed yet. The load terminal energized when I hooked up the battery. So I guess every time you cycle the power, it automatically energizes the load terminal. So be aware of that as well. You can see right here where it's tracking our PV, PV amperage, PV current, battery voltage, battery current. So it's got a rolling display that shows you everything that's going on. And it's not too far off from what the other instruments are showing. So get you one more shot right here. Yeah, I figured a cloud would get us. I'm starting to lose uh, the good power out of it now. So got clouds coming in. Oh, it's kind of all over the place in between the broken clouds. So glad I got that high current draw on this thing. So when we're not at max current, another thing I'm noticing too, look at that. It's running a little bit more efficient. So it was current limiting itself apparently at that 400 watt mark. So now that we've got some clouds and stuff coming in, uh, broken sky, it's what's in what's out is a lot better and then more clouds coming in so so i'm gonna share my final thoughts on this little time usb 30 amp charge controller i'm gonna give it to you straight like i always do this is not my favorite controller uh let me tell you why the user interface is difficult to set up on this and your the settings the way they got this you know the batteries l11 l12 all that if you don't have your manual you're gonna have no idea what that is. And that's another thing. The manual has no information on charge voltages and what the specs are, float voltages, equalization, anything like that for your batteries. Uh, I've not referenced their website because me filming right now, I have no internet. And this would be a prime example. Uh, right here, right now, no internet. So all I'd know what the settings are would be to pick one of the, lit the lithium setting for this battery, let it charge all the way up. I don't know if it's going to stop at 14.2, 14.4, 14.6. Is it going to hold a float at 13.8, 13.6, 13.4? Is it going to do a rebulk at 13.2, 4.6? No idea. They should include that in the manual. And took the over paneling, no problem. You know, I over paneled it. It current limited at 30 amps. You know, it's, it's probably got good hardware in it. It's just the, the operator's interface and stuff. It's just poorly executed overall. And the price of this at time of filming is $79. And I've seen this from $70 to $89, everywhere in between. There's no Bluetooth or anything like that if you're looking for Bluetooth. There's no front cover right here on these screws. I know I'm, I'm hitting it hard, but 
for a few more dollars, you can get a 40 amp controller with Bluetooth and, you know, protective covers on the wires and all kinds of different things. You know, this either needs to be a lot cheaper or needs to be revamped if they're going to ask this price for this controller. You know, and y'all let me know what you think. Am I being extra harsh on this or am I being a realist? I feel like I'm being a realist on it. So just let me know in the comments or any questions I can help you answer anything else you want to see with this controller. Uh, let me know. I can set it up again if you want to see something different on it. Appreciate y'all watching today. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one. And special thanks to Time USB providing this charge controller sample for me to test and evaluate and share my thoughts. I think y'all need a little bit of work on this controller, but thank you anyhow.